Welcome to episode 2 of Simly 2D Basics. If you've not watched episode 1, please go ahead and watch episode 1 so you will be able to understand episode 2. In episode 1, I talked about the points and the lined tools of Simly 2D. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the curve tools. These are all the curve tools I'm going to be talking about. So I have gone ahead to draw all these lines. As I said, if you don't know how to draw these lines on Simly 2D, please watch the episode one, where I really talked extensively about how to draw lines using the lines and point tools on Simly 2D. So let's go with the very first one. This is the first one. This is called an interactive curve. And I mostly use it when I'm doing my sleeve curve or a neck curve, that is the one I use, because it is interactive, you can change it the way you want. You know, you can adjust it the way you want. Let's say this is a shoulder, this is a chest, and this is a, a bust line. Let's say you're drawing, you, you, you want to do a sleeve curve. Let's say I need the curve from here to A5. So that's it. Only two points is okay for the interactive curve. All you have to do now is to adjust it to be the way you want it to be. And once you start adjusting it, these two angles comes out that you can adjust to be the way you really want it to, to lie. So hold on to it and then adjust it. Bring it down. Adjust it. Let it sit where you want it to sit just like so so that's it you've gotten your curve but i need to show you a little tip and a little secret here if you are doing a pattern for multiple sizes which is the basis of grading your patterns it is not it will not work well if you just adjust it with your hand and leave it there you need to give it variables you know that Simply 2D is a, a parametric passion um, CAD pattern drafting system. It works with variables. So what you do now, if you click, right click on it, and then you go to properties, you see what comes out. You have an angle here for the first point. You have another angle here for the second point. And then you have lengths. So what you should do right now is to copy this or you snap it what i do i will just copy it because those are the things i want to adjust and i want to give it a variable so that the system can work with that so this first one let me just write the three comma three eight i'll say three eight four and then the second one one comma four 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 one comma four 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 now we know that if you are drawing a curve most times it is the chest line and the bust line that changes how the curve looks so i'm going to base this curve on this variable this a9 to a10 and a4 to a5 and i'm going to show you how to do that so if you come here to this place that is fx and you click on it Please remember to copy this. It's important. 3.384. I just abbreviated it to 3.384. So now, this very first one, I'm going to be basing it on, let's say this is a chest line, A9 to A10. So once I open the property, I now come to line length. And then I'll look for that A9 to A10 line. So just scroll down and you'll see A9. Look at it here, A9 to A10. So let's remove this and let's double click this. And now see what the value is. So I want to get this value. I want, what can I multiply this value by to give me this value? Don't be confused. You can watch the video several times because if you don't do this, if you want to create multiple patterns with multiple sizes, if you don't give it variables, it probably will not work well. That's why I need to mention it here. So now, see the value we have. What you do now, divide this value by the 3.384. If I divide this value by 3.384, let me quickly do that. 
So let's say 3.384 divided by 0 0.891, 0 0.891. You're having 3.79, 3.79. That means if I multiply this by 3.79, let me do that quickly. 3.79. I'm going to have that 3.38. I hope you're understanding me. So that means this variable now, we need to multiply it by 3.79. So you just go here to multiplication sign, multiply by three seven nine so you see once you do that you get that value you get that value so that means anytime you want to create a curve the curve will be based on the chest line and it will use this formula to calculate it based on the person's chest line so we are done with that you just click on okay now, the second one, you just do the same thing. This one now, you now go to this FX. You are looking for a value of 144. You go to FX. And we're going to be using A4 to A5. We go back to that line length. We look for A4 to A5. There we have it there. I didn't remove this. I need to remove this 1.444. Okay. to remove this. So that's the value. So what will you multiply this or what will you divide this by to give you that 1.444? So what will you do? Divide 3.039 by 1.444. So if I do that quickly, if I do um, 3.038 divided by 1.444 so that is 2.10 so that means i need to divide this by 2.104 so i will just divide I'll just divide it by divided by 2.104 so you see the value that i get once you do that and then you hit on okay so now you know that if you are now doing a size 16 and you put your formula your, or, or that formula there if you don't want to switch that pattern to a size 14, it will automatically adjust itself based on So that is majorly the what I wanted to point out with that. Since I use this a lot, and if once you start um, drafting patterns, you're probably going to be using this a lot. So let me quickly go through these three before we now go to this spline. Now, this is a fixed curve. I, I, you can use this one if you want to do a curve that you know that you don't want it to move to anywhere. You want it to be fixed. Maybe you're doing a skirt and the edges of the skirt is curved, you know, curved with the same kind of curve and the same kind of width and length and all that. You can use a fixed curve. So to do that, you just click on it. Let's say I just want to do a curve from here to here to here so it's fixed i cannot do anything with it i can't i can't adjust it i can't i can't do anything in fact if you click on it and go to properties and look at it it just shows you the path there's nothing you can do you can't adjust anything so that's it for that one there's nothing much to it now uh let me remove it and let me do the talk about this one this one is just putting a point along the curve whatever curve if you want to create a point along the curve 
you do it. So let me just get create a curve from here to here. Maybe I'll just adjust it if I want. It really doesn't matter. Then let's say I want to create a point on the curve. Once I click on it, I have to click on the curve. And then what do I want to do? Remember that the curve starts from A10 to A5. That's how it starts, A10, A5. So do you want to create a point from start point or do you want to create it from end point? So you have the choice. We want to create it from start point. Let's say you just want to create a one centimeter from start point. Okay, the one centimeter is there. We want to create it from end point. As I said, you can also do that. All you have to do is to click on it, use the properties, and then you create it from end point and enter OK. I see where the point is fixed. So it's, it's very straightforward and it's something you may be probably used many times, you know, especially if you want to do a French curve, you want to know where the curve is going to start from, where to your bust point down to your waist. You can always use this um, point on the curve. So this is just interaction between two curves. So what I might probably do, let me create another curve from here to here so that they interact. And then you just find the point of interaction. So let me create another curve possibly from here to here. No, that's, there's no interaction. Okay, I can create an interaction now. Okay. So for you to say maybe you want a point at the point of interaction of the two curves, that is when you use this particular tool. Then you hit on the two curves and then you will see the point. A12. So if you click on this, I think, to get the properties. You can always adjust where you point, want the point to to be. So that's it for that particular one. Let's talk about the spline tools. I've gone to draw more lines for the purpose of illustrations. These are the spline tools. So what do you use them for? This one, you normally use it when you want to do a long curve that involves a lot of points. For instance, if you're plotting your front and back patterns, where you have the hands, most times the hands may be, um, you want to draw the curve of the front pattern and the back pattern. That is when you use this um, particular spline where you need so many points to join so many points. Let me show you what I mean. So if I click on it and let's say I want to start from 12, I'll join 12 to 9, I'll join it to 8, I'll join it to 10, I'll join it to 11, I'll join it to 14, I'll join it to 13. And once you do that, you can continue to join and join, but if you want to stop, you just do an enter and it stops. So now you have so many things that you can play with to adjust the curve to fit it the way you want it to fit. So you can adjust it to ensure that it comes out the way you want it to, to come out. That is essentially what this first is all about. If you want to do join many points to create a curve, then this is a spline that you will use. Now, this particular one, I use it for if you want to do a flay skirt. So once you've gotten your angles and you've gotten your lines, you can also join the dots. In which case, these are the, this particular spline is a fixed curve. You know, if you want to do your flay and it's fixed the way you want it, that is when you use this one. So if I click on it, I have the opportunity to join A, to A2, to A7, to A8, 18, to A19, to A20, to A27, 
and then I can just enter. And it stops. So that curve, you cannot do anything with it. You cannot adjust it. That is how it is. So you have to ensure that whatever point you're joining is aligns well the way you want the curve or the flare of your skirt to be or the flare of your sleeves to be. So you, you have to make sure that it, your, your points align well so that when you do the curve, it is fixed. It is fixed so that when you're extracting the pattern, you know, you can extract it and the curve will be there and it will just be exactly the way you want it. I'm not going to go into this because it's just a point on the spleen. It's just the same uh, principle as this one. The same principle. This particular one is just a, a point on uh, uh, adding the intersection between a line and a spline. Why do I keep calling that thing? I don't know whether it is spline or whether it is spleen. <laughs> Whichever way you want to pronounce it, you know. But this is a line across a spleen. Now, this is a spleen. Let's say I want to create a line from here to, to cut across here, maybe from here to here, and to cut across this spleen. What I have to do first is to highlight it, and then I will select the spleen first, and then I will click the first point that I want, and then I'll click the second point that I want it to pass through, which is this one. And you can see now it has given me a connection where there is an intersection between the spleen or between the spline and the line. So that's essentially what you can use this for. So that's it. So with that, I've come to the end of um, episode two of Simly 2D Basics for the Beginner. So go try your hands on it. Now it is time for you to watch episode three, where I'm going to be talking about arcs.